I'm 86 years old and uh, I'm in the bathtub with two crocodiles. They're like pet crocodiles because real crocodiles have gone extinct. So they're like small and pink and they're crawling all over me. I'm drinking nice Moroccan coffee and I'm listening to old Chief Keef demos and just like beautiful women everywhere, exotic pets. And I don't know, I go down and check the mail. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Young Leander checking in from Montreality TV. Sad boys, emotional boys, you already know. All the way Sweden to Canada. I feel happy, you know? I feel I'm happy to like inspire young cats and new new people because I was when when I came on the scene, like I was sixteen, two thousand thirteen, I was super inspired by people and I gave them shots out. I was like I was inspired by main attractions, blah blah blah, Space Ghost Perp, Three Six Mafia, all of that. And you know, whenever they reached out and they were like, You're doing your thing, keep going. Lil B, whatever, it makes you so happy. So I'm happy I got to inspire because I've been inspired by so many good people before me. And uh, I don't think I'm underrated, no. I think uh, it's rare, you know, to see how many like big artists uh, fuck with my shit. And maybe they don't always come out and say it, but all of a sudden you get DMs from all types of artists that are way bigger than I am, but came out years after me. And, you know, they always salute, so I salute back, you know. I don't think I'm an underdog. And I've had, I've, you know, I'm not even in my prime yet. Not even. I'm, I'm doing some of the best music right now, but it's only gonna get better, you know, when I get the full vision, when I get like the full support of the vision that I have and just both musically and visually, it's gonna, then, I'm, then I'll be satisfied, then I can die happy. Mistakes, I think. I think it comes from mistakes, like, that's how every genre comes about, you know? Like some kids messing around, they accidentally record it from the wrong way and then it sounds good or they sing it, in another language they don't know, which is a mistake from the beginning, and it turns out to be better. You know, that, that that's how it goes, I think. Mistakes, uh, like, create creativity. But I think everyone's, you know, everyone's creative. Everyone's creative in their own way. Everyone that has a regular day job is, is you know, it's not like it's just sheep. I kind of look up to people with day jobs and you can go on with life without being creative. Sometimes I feel like the fool, you know, standing on stage, talking about myself, like, what gave me the right to do this? But we all just play a part in our, in life. And I think we've played these parts forever, basically, in all, all the lives we've lived. Um, first, the first time I did LSD, the only thing that I saw, like, you don't really see things. Things are just moving, you know, slightly. But what I kind of envisioned when I was closing my eyes was I, like, I saw this barber shop, And in this barber shop they had a jukebox. And in the jukebox they had different voices. And I heard all these voices. And I could, like, choose my own voice. That doesn't make any, th any sense. Like, that didn't bring me anywhere. But then I went into the bathroom. I started taking all, all my clothes off and I was like looking in the mirror and I was like, shit, this is all I have. Like, this is all I have. This is my body, this is it. And I put my cell phone, my cigarette packet, my weed, my lighter, blah, 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 passport and just lined it up and like, this is not a part of me, this is just an extension. And I started working out like crazy. I was like super high, tripping of acid, like just working out, doing 100 push-ups. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably the most fun. Uh, thing I can tell you about psychedelics.
No, I'm scared of the future, really. Like, all this Black Mirror stuff and everything, that's, that's, it's, it's more scary than it is fulfilling or it's not gonna bring more freedom. It's gonna be like the opposite, I think. I don't know, I'm excited about a lot of things in the future though, like everything creative is gonna be fun and everything with, uh, I don't know, healthcare and like medical care could be really, really interesting. And like it would be much easier to get, you know, prosthetic legs or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I just want people to be able to have like wings and like, I don't know, devil horns if they want or like green laser eyes or like a transformer arm, whatever. But we're not going into that direction. We're just very much into person, private people's information. It's like the whole WikiLeaks thing is one thing, but when it goes the other way and you start taking innocent people's information and sharing that, that's when shit gets fucked up. And I think we're going to, towards that, you know? I think the new, like, death um, is, is not gonna be death. It's gonna be like public humiliation. It's gonna be like whatever is happening. I don't know what's happening to James Charles, but like things like this, people are gonna get publicly humiliated on Twitter and Instagram, and that's gonna be the new way of like back in the day in the, in the middle age, you know, people were just throwing rocks at like witches in the center of town. That's what's happening now. Um, just gonna leak information, expose things. I think, I think people are getting more and more paranoid because they have everything here inside their phones, you know? And then what's the difference between like your head and your phone? Like, does the phone know more about you than you do? Like, I don't know. It's scary, but it's interesting. <laughs> Actually, when I really think about it and what I usually say is I think it's gonna go the other way around. I think this like revolution we're having in technology is just gonna turn on itself and eat itself in the ass, you know, like a snake. like none of us are gonna look at screens in 20 years. We're all gonna be like fucked from screens and we're all gonna be reading books and just like communicating and completely different. Like public phones are gonna be a thing again, definitely. I, I honestly, I don't, don't think too much about it. I think it's just if you, if you buy something that you really fuck with, then um, it doesn't like, it doesn't have to be expensive to uh, to mean anything to you. I think things come with sentimental value. These these pants um, weren't the most expensive pants, but I just put them on every day, and then after a while you feel comfortable with them, and then you just mix them with whatever. I think it just comes from, I always just liked putting on good shit and mixing whatever I had, and if I couldn't afford what I really wanted, then I'd buy the cheap version, and then everyone like Sherman, Echo, Blade, everyone, they all like dressed so well without, before we had any cash. I think it's like, it's important to be able to dress yourself before you have cash. Because if someone just hands you money, you're gonna look like an idiot. You're just gonna be dressed in <laughs> Gucci, Balenciaga, like everything you see online. But you haven't really gotten your own style yet, so you're just gonna look like someone you've seen in a photo. And um, you're never gonna be really comfortable. You're gonna look like you just walked out the store. So I think uh, just like take your time by second hand for a while. Trap going nuts, man, my trap. To the haters? To the youth. To the youth. Um, mm, do something. Anything. Do whatever, you know. Start a m milk factory. Go uh, make a magazine. Uh, get a job. Draw painting. Do anything, you know. Just have fun. Stay safe. Safe sex. Save drugs and uh, have fun. That's it. Don't be like Uncle Lean. Imagine that sometimes it's, we're down here and then sometimes we're up here. But as long as you're going up and down, you're all good. 
As long as you're not here, then you're fine. Montreality show.